Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back to break down Thursday's NBA slate uh, for December 28th of 2017. Just a couple days away from the new year. Uh, had a pretty bad beat last night, but don't want to talk about that too much. Um, still cashed all my cash games, but uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I played the 888. And so that yeah, that just that just didn't go well. So like uh, like Kyle Kuzma proved last night and like they always say, shoot or shoot. So I'm back at it again tonight in the 555. Probably to get smoked in the 555 and then probably cry my way to a loss of a lot of money and <laughs> consider sitting out tomorrow night. But I will still have a video tomorrow night. Um, or not tomorrow night. I'll have a video for tomorrow's slate whether I play or not. I'll play probably whether I win or lose tonight. But man, if I lose, it's going to be tough to swallow playing tomorrow night. Especially if I cash cash games but not the 555. That's the worst. Like, like I had a winning night, I guess. But I, I didn't win the one tournament that I wanted. Um, but... Let's get into it. Detroit off the bat. We got Reggie Jackson and Avery Bradley out. So Ish Smith, uh, lock in the night. I'm going to lock in a couple of guys because they're just locks tonight. So we're going to lock them in. So let's put in Ish Smith in the point guard spot. All right. So other options you have is Langston Galloway, who should play the backup point guard. I, I know they put out a, I know they put out a, like, uh, oh, uh, what did I, uh, Hold on, let me see. They said who was going to be the backup. They said Ish would run the start, and then someone would run the backup almost exclusively. I believe it was Galloway, but some part of me is like, I don't think it was Galloway, but I'm probably just being stupid. Uh, but this is like an old, it was like an old report. Let me see. I'll give myself like 30 seconds to find it, but if, if it's not, it's whoever... I saw the report, and then uh, I would assume Ish plays like 30 minutes, so I don't think it really matters. Okay, I don't know where this is. Um, okay, we might be getting to it. Hold on. Should have done this before I started recording this. But then I, I looked at this, and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, I think it was the day that Jokic got ejected. So that's where I'm at right now in the news. So hold on. If I don't find it here, I'll just assume it's Langston Galloway. I'm like 90% sure it's Langston Galloway, but I wanted to give you guys the best information. Oh, we have the 5 million updates on Evan Fournier that were like three days ago. Okay, oh, where, oh, okay, hold on. Okay, no, I can't find it. All right, just assume it's Langston Galloway. I like Langston Galloway today, so we'll slot him into the shooting guard slot. He's not a lock, but I do like him today at 3,800. You should see should see 19 to 20 minutes. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe he gets up to 24, 28. I wouldn't expect 30, but 24 to 28 maybe. Gets a little bit of a bump and maybe gets to value. I don't know. He's probably not. We'll take him out. We'll take him out. We'll take him out because he's not a lock. I said I was going to lock in some locks. So, forward, pretty much just to buy his hairs. No one is really taking over, like, massively for uh, Avery Bradley while he's gone. I mean, guys are playing, like, 12 of his minutes, and they're just kind of splitting it around. So, I don't have much interest there. Drummond should see an assist bump, but I'm not going to play him against Bismack, and there's a couple of reasons why. So, let's move on to Orlando. Uh, we've got Vucevic out. We've got a Fournier questionable, we got Gordon questionable, and we got Terrence Ross out, as well as Jonathan Isaac is already ruled out. So if we get news that Evan Fournier and Aaron Gordon are out, I like the thoughts of Jonathan Simmons and uh, Mario Hazonia, but if Fournier plays again, and especially if Gordon plays, I probably won't go there. They're both game time decisions tonight, but the good thing is this is the first game of the night. So we don't have to worry about not getting the information. Uh, I like Biombo, but he's 4,600, so nowhere near a lock. Uh, so it kind of is just a clustered mess here with the magic until we get more news. So moving on to the Houston Rockets. It's more, it's like an if-and statement. If Gordon is out, you can look at Mo Spates. If Fournier is out, you can look at Jonathan Simmons and Mario Hazonia. If both are out, you can look at all of them. And then you can even look at like an Aaron Aflalo or DJ Augustine, guys like that. But let's move on to Houston. 
Chris Paul already ruled out. Clint Capella already ruled out, so we have some news there. Nene is 3,900, so it's probably, so he's not a lock or anything. Um, Eric Gordon, 5,800 against Boston. I don't know if I want to go there. James Harden, though, 11-4 against Boston. I do want to go there, but the issue becomes is all the value is in point guard tonight, or is in guard tonight, including Langston Galloway, if you want to go that route. But we'll go ahead and slot James Harden in because I think he is the closest thing to a stud lock as there is. And so, I'll probably end up going there. I'll probably end up going to Ariza or Gordon. Uh, Ariza's going to go out there and get you his 25. I mean, look at this. He's going to go out there and get you your 25. But is he going to get you any more against Boston? Probably not. But he's going to go out there and get you what he what he gets you every game. Eric Gordon, my issue is, is Eric Gordon needs to score 20 points to hit value. He doesn't score 20 points. You're in massive trouble. Like, if he scores, like, 16 points which is not a bad game which would still be contributing and all of that i mean that's before uh paul went out these are the five games without cp3 so i mean he's gonna he he probably gets there um but he's not a lock but i do really like eric gordon but that might just be like my own personal bias i just really like playing Aaron gordon at 5800 i mean he doesn't need to do he needs to make a shot, obviously, but he doesn't need to go off in order to hit value. Um, he's going to chuck the threes. Uh, the Christmas Day game was a little bit of an anomaly, but he's going to chuck his threes. He's going to have to hit them. Like, he's been shooting pretty well in these games without CP3, and so that's kind of the issue. But I think I can I think I can go back to the well and play him, but it all depends on how value shakes out. If he was shooting guard small forward eligible I'd probably play him but he's shooting guard point guard which kind of ruins things um I do like Aunt Ryan Anderson a little bit he's not at home uh and so I kind of like that and then PJ Tucker feels a little too overpriced for me so I probably don't go there moving on to Boston Jason Tatum one of my favorite plays on the day at 5500 he will probably crack my lineup similar to Trevor Ariza he's gonna get you his 25 but he also has his upside for 30 because he doesn't, he, he has some 40 point upside, I guess, if he double doubles, but it's mostly 30 point upside, which isn't bad, but uh, I don't know if I should be targeting a little bit more higher upside in my GP, in my 555, than just a guy who can get to 30, which is about 5.5x. Five, five um, so I don't, it, that's kind of a tough thing, but uh, I'll probably go to Tatum a little bit more upside than uh, Ariza. Um, Marcus Smart had an awful game last night. I don't know if you want to go back there. But Terry Rozier, also interesting value play. He's 4,300. Game should go small-ish, or at least small Or I mean, like, Jason Tatum can guard Ryan Anderson. That's not an issue. And uh, Jason Tatum can guard P.J. Tucker. Like, I don't have an issue with them guarding those guys. So the game probably goes small, which means Terry Rozier gets on the court. Um, Semi Ojale is also out, but that's not huge breaking news. Al Horford and Ky Kyrie is 8K, um, but there's another guy in the next game that's 7,700, so it kind of eliminates Kyrie from my lineup. And uh, Al Horford, interesting play at 7,100. I don't know if I'll go there, but interesting play. He's going to need to see in the 30s if he... I mean, he plays in the 30s if the game stays close. Except Miami, he didn't, he didn't, uh, but he played all around bad in Miami. But the issue is, is if he doesn't get the rebounds, he's really not hitting value. Um, so it's kind of a, I don't know, not a give or take. It's a, it's a kind of tight issue because he's not going to score. He's going to get you 14 points. It's not going to be this 41. It's not going to be this 20 point game. So that's kind of the issue I have with Horford. Probably won't go there tonight, but I do like him as a play. So moving on to 55 or to to Minnesota and the 7700 guy that I was talking about. Jimmy Buckets is only 7700 after last night. Played 42 minutes, which that's nothing to Jimmy Butler. Uh, where was the? They haven't had a back to back in for what the heck? They haven't had a back to back ever like in forever. So I don't know what Tibbs. Did. Okay, that's. That's a little annoying that they don't... They haven't played a back-to-back -back in the month of December, really. Um, But I assume Jimmy Buckets is going to get his 40 minutes. It should be a competitive game, even though Milwaukee got on a back-to-back. -back. Minnesota is, and Minnesota had to travel. Um, Did they play at home last night? That makes a big... Did they play at Denver or at home? Okay, they played at home. 
So it's not that far of a trip from Minnesota to Milwaukee. Uh, so I'm not too worried about the travel. So Jimmy Butler, granted he plays, which I think he plays, is a lock-in for me at 7,700. Um, and then we have Jeff Teague out. I don't know why. Okay, this is marked as out. There on uh, on the mobile app, he's not marked as out. As out. So may get a little bit lucky there. But Tyus Jones. Uh, let's see, Tyus Jones. Put Tyus Jones in there. So Tyus Jones lock and load. And then it becomes who else on this team do you want to play? For me, I want to play Carl Anthony Towns. Comes in at 8900. Played a season low in minutes last night, I believe, at 30. He got into foul trouble and then fouled out and didn't play OT. Was on his way to a monster game and then uh, fouled out. So he comes in at 8,900. A uh, little steep to crush value or anything, but Milwaukee ranks dead last. Okay, hold on. i got to remember this. They rank dead last. I have it. Hold on. Let me pull up my notes. I took the notes on Carl Anthony Towns. Okay, uh, so... Teague missed four games in November, and Cat saw 4% usage rate, and uh, the Bucks uh, they, they ranked dead last in defensive efficiency against opposing front courts, and I believe they ranked, and they ranked 22nd in overall defensive rating against the whole entire defense, or the whole entire team, and I believe they rank worse even against the center. I think they ranked 20. They rank dead last in the efficiency against front courts, but I think it's dead last, dead last against centers, and then like 28th against power forwards. So even bigger boost to Cat. He should draw John Henson, which I'm not worried about. Should see an assist rate uh, boost, and Tyus Jones should shoot less than um, what's his face than Ty or than uh, Jeff Teague. So. On the Milwaukee, that's about all I have interest here. Maybe a little Marcus Georges Hunt. They've been trying to get him into the rotation, but I doubt I go there. Jamal Crawford at 3,800 is relatively interesting. Um, yeah, he should play with Teague out. I would assume he plays near 30 minutes. Um, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Crawford might not have 30. <laughs> that might be a little overstate. Maybe like 26 minutes. Um, because Tyus Jones, I don't think we're going to have it. Yeah, Tyus Jones played like 30-some minutes, so he there's still some point guard minutes to soak up. And I would assume if Aaron Brooks sit, Aaron Bro Brooks might play, and then I expect him to soak up the minutes at point guard. But if he sits, it's probably Jamal Crawford. But moving on to the Milwaukee Bucks, no interest really here. The only guy I have interest in is Giannis, but I feel like Giannis is a worse play than Harden, so that's my issue there. But Giannis should play near 40 minutes tonight. It should be a really tight game. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, see, the guard built, see, if you lock all these guys in that I have locked in for you, the issue becomes is that there's other guards that you could play. There's a Langston Galloway. There's some other guys like that that you can lock in at shooting guard, and then you can just play Giannis. So that's kind of my issue. I'm down to like a 2v2 swap today, and so it's kind of become kind of a massive issue. The spread in this game is only 3.5, so it should stay close, meaning Giannis should see his full allotment of minutes. But... The Bucks are healthier than they were, and even guys like Delhi and to not Tony Snell, really, a little bit Tony Snell, but they all take away usage from Giannis, and so that's my issue. Middleton went back down in price to 7,500 after posting a dud against the Bulls in almost 40 minutes. So I do have some interest in uh, Middleton. Uh, 7,500 is a nice price for him, so... You can also consider just fading Harden. It gets you back up to 6,200, and then you can play a guy like Chris Middleton if you put him at small forward. Let me go back and get Langston Galloway. So, yeah, Langston Galloway at guard. I wish it was smart enough to put him in the shooting guard spot. Okay, so if you do something like that, you got 6,900 left, and then you can go... I'm pretty much done with Milwaukee. There's no one else on Milwaukee that I really want to talk about. Um, I pretty much talked about the two guys that I like. So moving on, so you could go, it'll probably be back here. So you go like an Al Horford at power forward, and then that leaves you 6,700 for a, a another forward spot. 
which you're looking at Pau Gasol. If those guys sit, you're looking at Jonathan Simmons. I mean, that's a pretty good lineup. It fades the two superstars on the slate, but you get Jimmy Butler, 50-point upside. Carl Anthony Towns, 60-point upside. I mean, Butler has 60-point upside, but we'll just say 50. 50 50-point upside Butler, 60-point upside Towns, 40-point upside Horford. I mean, Horford's upside is semi-limited. Like, I understand that. It's kind of a struggle to play Horford. But he does have 45-ish upside. Chris Middleton, 40, 45-point upside. But he's steady for his points. I mean, I really do like that lineup. But I feel like Harden breaks the slate tonight against Boston. So that's my issue. I also like Eric Gordon because he gets Kyrie defense. Because they should put... Um, actually, I don't know who they've been shadowing on who. I would assume they'll start Marcus Smart again. I'm assuming the starting lineup will be Kyrie, Smart, Tatum, Horford, and then if Morris plays Morris. But, so, I would assume Smart has to guard Harden, and Kyrie will get Gordon. So I kind of like Gordon, but once again, we don't have money, for, or we don't have spots for guards. So that's the issue. We take up all, we take up three two guard spots immediately with Tyus Jones and Ish Smith. It's just going to be a tough night. So let's move on to the New York Knicks. Pretty limited interest here against the Spurs. I think I might just full fade it, but if you like two guys, Cantor, Porzingis, they're about the only two that I'd look at other than that. Let's move on. Get off the Knicks. So moving on to the Spurs, this is much pretty much a pass two. Kawhi, questionable. It's probably just Kawhi, Gasol, Aldridge. Looks like all the guards will play. So yeah, just Kawhi, Gasol, Aldridge, but really pretty much a game I'm Xing out. Moving on to Philadelphia, Portland. Joel Embiid, questionable. He says he should be able to go tonight. Obviously, if he sits, fire up Dario Saric, Rashawn Holmes. Uh, but if he goes, pretty much no interest through here. Uh, ben Simmons has had some really bad games. Probably would go there if he's out. Same with Bob Covington. Bob Covington is 5,900. If Embiid sits, I will go there even though he hasn't played well either. Uh, he hasn't been shooting, which is the issue. Like, Covington, you're like the third best player on that team behind Embiid and Simmons. Shoot the ball. Like, why are you shooting it five and eight times? That What is that? That's one shot every seven minutes. Like, what are you doing, Bob Covington? What are you doing? That's one shot every four and a half minutes. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like, shoot the ball. Uh, but other than them, it really depends on M- Embiid. If he, Embiid is in, I probably just don't go anywhere there. So moving on to the Trailblazers, I really only have interest in one guy, and it's Damian Lillard. Should be back, should be 100% healthy, should be good to go. Should get, like, TJ McConnell, JJ Redick, uh, who's the other guard? TJ McConnell, JJ Redick, Jared Bayless type defense. Maybe sees a little Ben Simmons, but... I'm not worried about that, Uh, but Damian Lillard, once again, is a guard, so it kind of makes it hard to fit him in the lineup, but other than him, no real interest uh, until I see see Nurkic actually play some real minutes. (laughs) I'm not playing Yusuf Nurkic, uh, especially at 6,300, but guys, that's going to do it. I hope this helped you. Drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't. NFL will be posted tonight or after NBA lock, probably at 7, I'll post it, and so that's going to do it, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.